welcome back students again i am here to talk about uh, the geotechnical engineering course so we were discussing about the index properties in detail now we will be covering today the particle size analysis particle size analysis by the name i think you have understand what we will be doing here we will actually be uh, looking into the classification of the soil according to their size only okay the classification in detail we will be co covering later on but here only the particle distribution will be seen in detail so what is particle size analysis you can say particle size analysis is a method of separation of soils into different fractions based on the particle size particle size means you know there is a clay there is sand there is silt okay and all so each of them have a different particle size clay is the smallest one bigger is the silt then sand okay then we can say gravel boulders are also there so they start keep on increasing so this classification we are talking about okay it expresses quantitatively the proportion by mass of various sizes of particles present in a soil now it is shown graphically on a particle size distribution curve okay we will be dealing with the curve also later on grain size analysis helps in determining the gradation and uniformity of soil actually we also have two parameter that is cu and cc okay coefficient of uniformity coefficient of curvature so these two help us to grade gradation and uniformity okay this we will be discussing first of all this particle size analysis you can see here the, there is a table if the particle size is greater than 300 mm okay then it's a boulder it's called the boulder from 300 mm to 80 mm it's named as cobbel c o b b l e s cobbel okay then from 80 it was here okay now from 80 to 4.75 mm okay this is called gravel okay gravel then again what is sand sand as a whole will be from 4.75 mm to 75 micron this is sand further bifurcation is done into the sand of coarse medium and fine which will be from 2 mm to 4.75 mm from 4 2 mm to 0.475 mm from 0.475 mm to 75 micron okay so this is your further bifurcation of the sand this two means sand plus gravel will give you what this will give you coarse grained soil okay this will give you the coarse grained soil then we come to the fine grained soil it again has two bifurcation silt and clay now silt will be from 75 micron to 2 micron okay and below that means less than 2 micron this will be clay okay so this is the general bifurcation according to the particle size there are coarse grained and there are fine grained inside coarse grained there is gravel and sand and inside fine grained there is silt and clay all have their accordingly size okay from 80 mm to less than 2 2 micron we have classified the particles now we will be dealing with the coarse for coarse soil we will be de dealing with the particle size analysis in the about the fine uh, soil we will be dealing in the next class so remember for coarse soil we generally have sieve analysis okay for coarse soil we have only the sieve analysis now this sieve analysis may be again either coarse sieve or maybe fine sieve okay now what is coarse sieve coarse sieve is mainly adopted for the gravels remember this is for gravels so since gravel is how much from 80 mm to 4.75 mm just now you saw it so the sieves which we will be using will be from 80 mm to 4.75 mm 20 and 10 are included okay this one is the coarse sieve analysis always done dry 
but in fine sieve analysis what is fine sieve analysis this is now done for obviously san okay now san what is the range 2 mm to 75 2 mm to 75 micron okay this is your sand so we will have this sieves accordingly we will be have 2 mm 1 mm 600 micron 425 micron 212 micron 150 mm micron and 75 micron okay seven number here we are only four numbers and further this can be a dry analysis or wet analysis what are these dry and wet analysis we will be talking in about it later on the smallest sieve uh, in the size will be 75 why because we are talking about cores and after 75 micron the foils having the size lesser than 75 micron are falling under the fine so we will only have up to this sieve okay now let us see core sieve analysis this is nearly the procedure okay take the Uh, sample cores aggregate in pan and place it on the dry oven at temperature 100 to 110 degrees centigrade after drying take the sample weight to the nearest grams okay now we have the uh, soil or the gravel whatever it may be and we have weighed it by after the oven drying now arrange the sieves in descending order and put the arrangement on mechanical sieve shaker okay means what we do now we will be arranging something suppose like this there will be number of sieves okay what are sieves i have already told you like this and sieve the minimum minimal size will be suppose if there is a 4.75 mm will be here this is a pan okay solid pan means no perforations will be here this will be here and here it will be 80 mm decreasing okay accordingly so we will be arranging the sieve in this manner okay then what will uh, take place we will now carry out the sieving process using a mechanical shaker why mechanical because, because it gives a better and accurate result okay so we will use mechanical shaker and finally for coarse grain we uh, remember we actually find out what fineness modulus fineness modulus okay here also it may be this fineness modulus value of fineness modulus is find out okay so then after proper sieving record the sample weights retained on each sieve and find out the cumulative weight of retained particles as well as cumulative percentage retained on each sieve means what we will do i'll show you an example after this finally add all the cumulative percentage values and divide the result with 100 we get the fineness modulus okay so let us see an example you will understand the process this is the example see we will ha we were actually having initially of 5000 grams what is 5000 grams means 5 kg okay so 5 kg of soil was there for us now what we did you can see we arranged the sieves like this from 80 mm now it is slowly going up to 0.15 mm okay there are different types of sieves this and that now we put all the soil on the top one means 80 mm 80 mm sieve okay suppose okay we will be putting this suppose is 80 mm all the soil will be put on to here and there are number of others also okay so there are numbers of sieves all these sieves are here now this will be shaken okay Me mechanical shaker is there it will shake it okay it will move it here and there like this and it will shake it so what happens after the test is performed or completed what we see what we found out is the weights retained what is the weight re weights retained on 80 mm nothing is retained means it is empty okay after that in 40 mm 250 grams was retained okay similarly in this 20 mm there was 1750 then 1600 and all okay so different retain was found now what we do we find the cumulative weight retained cumulative means zero will be zero now how, how is this cumulative zero plus this means 250 will give you 
I can how this 250 plus means this one plus this one means 1750 will give you 2000 ok again 2000 means this 2000 plus this will give you means 1 sorry 1600 will give you 3600 and so on ok. So, we found out the cumulative weight retained in the grams ok you understood this one. Then percentage retained how will you get the percentage retained this is 0 so no problem 5 how will you give 5 percent 250 divided by 5000 into 100 in percent did you get it this was 250 total was 5000 grams so this upon this into 100 will give you retain again how this one 2000 upon 5000 into 100 do you will get this 40 and so on ok. So, finally, we got out the table or solved the whole table and found out that the sum was coming out for this cumulative to be 717. We add each of them this plus this plus this plus this plus. So, we found out 717 is it ok. So, what we now did we got 717 just now you saw it ok divided by 100 we will get 7.17 why did you in the process also there is written you can see that this is divided by 100 finally we will divide by 100 to get the value of fineness modulus so we have done the same so fineness modulus comes out to be 7.17 what does this mean the average size of the particle of the given coarse aggregate sample is between 7 and 8 sieve remember 7th and 8th sieve it is ok not 7 and 8 it is not the value 7 and 8 which 7.17 it is not that it is telling us that average value or maximum value of the soil which was present in this sample will lie between the 7th and 8th sieve what was 7th and 8th sieve count from below ok 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 7th and 8th, 10 and 20. So, 10 and 20, ok. So, maximum particle size in this sample is between this and this. This is the general, you can say the outcome of this process. Now, maximum size of the aggregate and fineness model, these are different. For 20 mm, generally it is uh, 6 to 6.9, and for 40, it will be. 6.9 to 7.5 for 75 it will be 7.5 to 8 and for 150 it will be 8, 8 to 8.5 ok. So, this was it. Now, fine sieve analysis. Fine sieve analysis means this is the fine sieve analysis does not mean that we are going to fine grain. This is the fine sieve analysis of the coarse grain only ok. Means now we will be tackling about the sand ok we will be tackling about this hand. It has two part dry and wet ok. We have a dry sieving, we have a wet sieving. Now, what does these two mean? Wet sieving is carried out for separating fine grains from coarse grain by washing the soil a specimen on 75 micron sieve mess. Means, you will take a sieve of 75 micron, suppose this is a 75 micron sieve ok. Put this oil in it and put water in it or wash this soil ok. What will happen? Water will obviously leave and those particles which are smaller than 75 micron or we can say those particles which are actually fine grained will also wash out with this soil or water sorry, we wash out with the water. Hence, what will be remained here? The coarse grain only, the coarse grain only. This is the wet analysis ok, wet process. Later on this is dried in an oven and we continue the process. So, this is actually a wet process. When is this carried out? When we have to separate fine from coarse grain and dry sieve analysis is carried out on the particles coarser than 75 micron. Samples with fines removed are dried and shaken through a set of sieves of descending size. The weight retained in each sieve is measured the cumulative percentage quantities finer than the uh, sieve sizes are then 
determined. The resulting data is uh, presented as distribution curve, green size along x axis, percentage passing along y axis. Means you can you have understood I think this is this process is same as we have done in the uh, just before in the course sieve analysis. Okay, so just the thing is dry and wet, dry sieving and wet sieving. Dry sieving is done when there is no fine grain mixed with the soil. Okay, otherwise we have to do the course. Then we have to dry out and then perform the same. Okay. Now fine sieve analysis. Soil passing from one four point seven five ISC when retained on this contains no fine. Those soils can be directly dry sieved. Okay, so dry sieving procedure. Let's see. Five hundred gram of soil is taken. Then what is it done? Conduct sieve analysis using a set of standard sieves as given in the data sheet. Then the sieving may be done either by hand or by mechanical shaker for ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes is. The time maximum time for which the shaker is used. Okay, generally we use the mechanical shaker. Weigh the material retained on each sieve. Means again the same process. If you have 80 mm, in this case obviously it's fine. So it will start from how much? 4.75. Then something like that and go up to below. And last will be the 75 micron obviously. So in each pan, how much it is retained? We have to weigh. Okay. Then percentage retained on each The uh, sieve is calculated on the basis of total weight. From these result, percentage passing through each is calculated. Then the grain size curve in semi-logarithmic graph is drawn or provided. Again, in the wet sieve, what is the difference? Here, what happens? The quantity of the fines is more than five percent. You can see. Hence, a wet sieve analysis is required. So, what is done? First of all, all lumps are broken. Then, 500 grams of woven dry soil is taken and soaked in the water. For heavy clays, deflocculation is done using Calgon solution. What is two percent Calgon? Two percent is obviously the concentration. It is indicating the concentration. But what is Calgon solution? It is actually uh, we can say it is a sodium hexa. Meta phosphate. This is in short known as Calgon solution. Okay. Sodium. Sodium hexametaphosphate. Okay. This is actually a deflocculating agent. What does this do? Is if you have particles. Okay. Particles of soil. Suppose like this. They are carrying charge. Due to which, what happens? They are attracted to each other, forming flocks. Okay, what does this do? This provides them neutral neutralization, so they don't come to each other. They are discrete now. Okay, or they do not flock. The sample is stirred and left for soaking for ten minutes. After this is mixed, ten minutes it is left. The mix through so the material is washed until the water filter becomes. Clear. What does this mean? The same process which I told you before. There is the suppose this is 75 micron and the soils are kept on it. Now soil is uh, water is passed through it. Okay, water is passed through it. So water will drain out. With it, the particle is smaller than 75 micron will also drain out. So we will check until the water is clear here. Okay, till that we will be washing it. The soil retained on 75 micron is collected and dried in oven. Now this much which is retained will be dried in oven. Then the sieve through the sieve shaker for ten minutes and retained soil on each is collected and weighed. The material would have been retained on the pan equal to the total mass of the soil taken in dry analysis minus the sum of the masses retained on all sieve. Means we are again finally doing the same as we did in the dry sieving. Okay, we will be calculating on each how much it is retained, then how much it is passing and all. Then we will finally form the semi-logarithmic graph or particle distribution curve. So this is the final particle distribution curve or grain size distribution curve for which we have been performing the experiments. This is the plot. You can see it's a semi-log graph. Okay. So here you can see this is the grain size. Okay. This is the grain size and this is the percentage finer. Okay. So it will obviously reach hundred percent 
in the end okay and then slowly we start from nearly zero and slowly increase okay in the curve what are their x axis obviously particle size y axis the percentage finer already i have shown you now there are few terms such as d60 d30 d10 what are these d60 is actually how the 60% of the soil particles are finer than this size okay means d60 is that size of the sieve this can be said that size of sieve okay that size of the sieve through which through which 60 percent of the total sample taken total sample taken will pass okay will pass this is the final thing actually means 60 percent of the uh, suppose you have 1 kg of soil okay from that sieve that sieve suppose this is the size uh, let us say 40 mm sieve size if from this sieve if 600 grams of the soil passes then this is our d60 this is the d60 not this okay this size of the sieve is the d60 d60 similarly d30 and d10 now i think you have understood so let's move further what is your cu and cc coefficient of uniformity q coefficient of gradation okay or it's also called as coefficient of curvature okay here you can see this is d60 d30 d10 is shown here this much is the d60 this much is your d10 d25 everything is shown okay now let us talk about this cu cc just you have to understand that these are the parameters which help us to grade the soil okay means how the soil is is it a fine grain it is a coarse grain how okay it is it is it a fine grain soil or is it a coarse grain soil just we have to find out this only using these two parameters okay this was this tells us two things first of all what is this soil either is it a sand or it is a gravel okay first of all these two things are told by these two parameter is it a fine grain soil or a coarse grain soil well graded soil or poorly graded soil okay these th something some few parameters can be clarified using these two cu and cc just look into the formula cu is d60 by d10 and cc is d30 square upon d60 into d10 okay so we have two formulas okay just now i explain you what is d60 and what is d10 what is d30 everything so i think now you have understood how to calculate these two just look into the values cc coefficient of curvature if it is between 1 and 3 okay and if cu is greater than 4 then it will be gravel actually you can write it as actually talking the i'm sorry let me write here only cu is if cu please copy it it's important part if cu is greater than or equal to 4 this means it is a gravel okay if cu is greater than or equal to 6 it means it is sand gravel and sand okay this is the first part cu means coefficient of uniformity the coefficient of uniformity actually comes into handy to all uh, bifurcate or to identify whether the soil is gravel or sand then we come to cc or coefficient of curvature if cc or coefficient of curvature lies between this lies between 1 2 3 included then this will be well graded soil well graded soil else 
if it is not means if cc is not the element of 1 and 3 this will be obviously poorly graded okay poorly graded so if we have the uh, two things suppose this and this okay and this and this means if we have cc is in between this and cu is in between this then total what we get well graded gravel again if we have this is in between 1 and 3 and this is in greater than 6 this means well graded sand okay this and this okay i think you have understood this is also this also comes handy a number of times to find out what is the soil and how how graded or how poorly graded it is here it will be graded a okay so this was it you can uh, answer to some of the questions listed here next time we will be talking about the fine grain soil classification okay this was for the coarse grain only now so next time we will be conducting the different experiments and consulting about the how the fine grains can be classified okay thank you